Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. This is your tarot reading for the month of February 2024. We're going to get nine cards, three rows of three from the Giant Rider Waite Smith deck. They're all face down in front of me, so let's see what you're going to get. First card out is the Eight of Cups upright. So Aquarius, I am seeing a lot of you are making some sort of transition in life. I don't know why. I just got the message. Some of you are transitioning something in your career. So I wonder if some of you are like older, if you are making a smooth transition into retirement and you're taking on less work, or maybe you went down in hours or something. I don't know why that exact example just came to my mind. Uh, some of you may be making a smooth transition from like, uh, education and schooling to a career life or a smooth transition uh like literally moving like moving houses so you're moving quite slowly like moving things when you have the time the space it feels like a very smooth and natural transition away from one way of life to another way of life and it does very much feel like a way of life that you are changing in february and this could even be like smoothly transitioning out of one habit to another maybe some of you are reducing your caffeine intake uh cutting back on drinking it's just it's something that you feel very drawn to do okay and this could even be walking away from someone as well it'll look different for all of you but this really shows like you're intuitively feeling like it's time to do this it just feels like the right time to transition in life and um make some sort of change and it's going to be very gradual it's not going to be this big massive thing that changes overnight in one day you know it's like a gradual Thing. It may not even be talked about for some of you. It's just like, this is what I'm doing. This is, you know, where I feel guided to go. But let's see if we can get more info on that or if anything else comes out. Okay. We have the Five of Wands. You know, <laughs> the Five of Wands is interesting. It shows when people challenge our beliefs. Um, and it kind of represents sometimes we get annoyed at other people, right? Um, or they just give us some sort of criticism that triggers us. So I would say pay attention to what triggers you when it comes to the people in your life. Like, do you have a coworker that annoys the crap out of you? Do you have a mutual friend you can't stand? Um, is someone in particular just getting under your skin? Really press into that. And what I mean by that is ask yourself, a journal about it. Like, why do I hate this person? Like, what is it about them or what behavior are they showing that I can't stand? Like, why am I getting triggered by this? And dig really deep there. Like, is there a wound, a trauma that they are rubbing up against? Is there something about this person that you need to embody more of? Is it that they are accidentally sort of brushing up against an insecurity of yours? When you really analyze and unpack why you feel agitated by the people around you, there is so much healing wisdom in that. And if you continue to do this all throughout your life, you'll kind of reach a point where you become so peaceful and at ease with literally everyone and everything in life. And you never take anything personally again, because you realize that everyone is just projecting their own wounds, their own mind onto you. And it's a beautiful place to be, but it certainly does not happen overnight. <laughs> it's a spiritual journey getting there. It's one where you have to constantly be processing the emotions that come up for you and pressing into the more uncomfortable emotions and shadows that come up and eventually you know you you sort of resolve and heal all those shatter, shadows and all that's left is your beautiful peaceful soul see if you're looking for peace if you're looking to experience love it's not a matter of finding something outside of yourself it's a matter of building something up within yourself and releasing releasing what is blocking you from that mm. And you can tell what's blocking you from peace because it's it's going to be very obvious. What's getting annoyed? What's what are you annoyed by in life? <laughs> what is the literal situation or emotion that is preventing you from experiencing peace and unconditional love, connection, harmony right now in the present moment? What is bothering you? Is it your roommate? Is it your coworker? Is it a lack of money? Is it a lack of something? Press into that. Why am I experiencing this lack? Why am I getting annoyed? And how is this a reflection of something that's going on within me? <sighs> Third card out is the Three of Swords. Okay, Aquarius, you know, I am feeling a situation here where something didn't work out in the past. It feels like 
and it's still agitating you or it's still heartbroken to you and you may be feeling like why am i not over this person yet why won't this person get over me you know it's like the wound of losing someone or something it feels like someone though it's continuously remaining fresh for some of you if it's that you're not over this person you know this is gonna be like controversial advice because i don't usually say this but i feel like this person is a soulmate they are spiritually connected to you and that's why they remain in your heart you know and you may have shared very vulnerable pieces of your soul with them and you remain in their heart as well but clearly there's some sort of disagreement or incompatibility that is separating you at this time but that doesn't make it any less painful you know i feel like for some of you you had to walk away from someone in the past because um you know i just think you triggered each other especially if you have a really deep soul tie you know <laughs> we can trigger each other into healing and those deep soul connections really really do bring out the deepest shadows and the most brilliant potential within us and sometimes it's too much to handle and you have to separate um, in order to process grow and, and resolve those shadows and you know embody more of yourself and um, i feel like this is a situation for a lot of you where you you did encounter some sort of separation with someone and this could be someone from weeks ago months ago years ago decades ago even <laughs> i am seeing that and you keep thinking about them or they keep popping up into your reality and you're like, you know, will I ever actually get over this? The answer is no. You know, grieving never ends. Yay. <laughs> because once someone's in your heart, they're there forever. And it's just that your life sort of expands beyond that, which makes the grieving a little bit easier because there's more life, more experiences to focus on other than the loss, the grieving. You know, when someone's your everyone or your everything and then you lose them, suddenly you have nothing because they were your everything. But as time goes on, you expand your life outside of that and you have new experiences and friends and hobbies and all that. So it becomes easier. You know, it's not necessarily that the grieving becomes smaller, it's that life becomes bigger. And I do feel like I need to validate you in saying that there is a significant soul tie here that you have to someone and, you know, you're not compatible right now. You're not together right now and it's hard and it's painful, but it's for the best. And I'm not going to sit here and say, wait for this person. I'm not going to sit here and say, chase this person, contact them. No, you may never talk to them again for the rest of your life. And that's totally fine. That's totally dandy. The universe will bring you people who are in alignment with you, who are ready for you. And um sometimes we're brought people who are aligned with us and soul tied to us but they are a reflection of our own inner shadows and it's hard to sit there and look at someone who hurt you and see yourself in them and understand how they are a reflection of your own energies or perhaps something that you need to embody a lost piece of your soul that you need to embody more of you know maybe if you're angry at someone because they are super loud and obnoxious um perhaps they are rubbing against the wounding of you losing a piece of yourself that's confident and speaks out loud and very opinionated maybe you had to shut that version of yourself down because that's the way you were raised and so that part of yourself was always shut down quiet your entire life and so when you see someone being loud and obnoxious it really irks you it really triggers you because you aren't allowed to be loud and obnoxious and the part of you inside the the inner child within you who was told to not be loud and quiet gets angry and it stomps on your brain <laughs> and it's like we hate that person because why do they get to be loud why do they get to be the center of attention but i can't be this is why it's so important to really dig deep and press into when people irk you or annoy you or break your heart or make some sort of emotional reaction out of you, even if it's positive, even if you are absolutely in love with someone, the qualities that you love about them, you can only see those qualities because you yourself have them. Mm, 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 mm. So look at your emotions. They're your greatest teachers and so are your relationships. Okay, second row of cards out. Fourth card is the Knight of Cups. You know, <laughs> This is love. You know, I, I feel like you're starting to romance life again and let life romance you. And uh, this is like your heart warming back up after some sort of loss or ending. Let's see where he's headed though. Center of your spread, six of pentacles. Mm, a lot of you are attracting a mutually giving relationship. 
is what I'm seeing. A complete balanced give and take here. Now having a balanced give and take doesn't mean you give 50, they give 50 every day. Cause there's gonna be days where you can only give like 20 <laughs> and they have to give 80. Uh, there may be days where you can give like 90% and they can only give 10%. And sometimes there may even be days where you're at a 30 and they're at a 20 and it's like, you know what? Let's just give each other some space today. How about that? You know, that's how life works and it's fine and it's beautiful. And I feel like you are attracting people who are more willing to return the energy that you give. Mm. But it's only going to happen after you really press into what annoys you about other people and you really heal and resolve that. Sixth card out is the six of wands. Success. Public recognition. Someone's watching your social media first and foremost. And I feel like this person is whoever the heck didn't work out with you in the past. Or And this could be, and this could be anyone. It could be romantic. It could be friendship. It could be anyone who you're missing, you know? Who you had a falling out with they're definitely watching you on social media and wanting to reach out in fact they might reach out i am seeing that um but this is also we have two sixes here i just realized as well i feel like if you um have your own business or social media platform it may be taking off a lot more in february i am seeing that there is growth there i feel like you're also being recognized in the workplace for what you do which is amazing and there may be some sort of gifts of appreciation tokens of appreciation that you've received in february either from family friends your job someone a partner someone is giving you some sort of gift or token of appreciation like i love you i see all that you do i support you like you you were offering me so much you do offer me so much and it's the least that i could do to you know show you what you were I, I just feel like people are seeing your value in the past there may have been people who were so blinded by their own ego um, which was protecting their wounds and their insecurities that they really couldn't see your value fully even if they wanted to because they could not see their own value and remember people project just how your emotional reaction to people is a reflection of you same thing in reverse you know if someone can't see your value it's not because you're not valuable it's because they don't see their own value and so if that was the case with a relationship or friendship in the past that broke up or broke off that is still painful to you where it's like they couldn't see your value they wouldn't commit to you or something like that it's not a reflection of you it's a reflection of them and you needed to separate so that way they could focus on realizing their own worth seeing their own value and really digging deep into those insecurities and dismantling the walls of ego um, that they put up in order to protect that insecurity so and once they do that they're going to really be able to see your worth <laughs> so a final row of cards out seventh card is the wheel of fortune i am honestly seeing unexpected communication and offers guys i am seeing unexpected romance for a lot of you as well and if you're already in a long-term relationship this could be like not expecting your partner to go out of their way to do something really sweet and special for you so that's amazing um or it's like i don't know why i'm getting like surprise parties for some of you someone may be throwing a surprise party or getting you some sort of like big gift or like showing up um where you're at it's it's a surprising energy so it's going to be almost impossible to predict this for a group reading but i would definitely expect someone um or multiple people even to come forward and you know give you something sweet and i'm seeing a lot of romantic gestures so if you're into your love life right now i feel like there are some very sweet romantic gestures coming your way in february that are, that's gonna be pleasantly surprising to you so beautiful uh, eighth card out is the three of cups people coming together to celebrate something this could be a birthday this could be a promotion some sort of celebration, or even just life itself you know coming together with a group of friends or coming together with your family and having a good time this may be drinking this may be going out and eating very good food spending some money on food drinks um i don't know someone actually may pay for you is what i'm seeing so that is really fun. I feel like you're going to have some great memories. Um, really feel that human to human connection, which is amazing. And then final card out. Oh my gosh, is the tower. Wow. <laughs> yeah, you know, the month of February, and I feel like the month of January for you as well, was sort of like dismantling um, your own toxicity. Oh my gosh, I have to say it. That's what just came out of my mouth. Not even like to other toxic people around you, like got to get rid of them. Like, no. I feel like 
they're just a reflection of your own toxicity. Like, let's call it how we see it here, Aquarius. Um, you're getting deep, you're getting psychological and introspective and having the strength to look at what you dislike in other people, how other people trigger you, trigger you. And it's like, how is that me? How am I in this person? You know, what do, how do I see myself in this person whom I'm annoyed by, who I hate? Like, what are they teaching me? What are they showing me? What are they brushing up against? How are they holding a mirror to my soul? And it's not that other people's toxicity is breaking down. It's that you are sort of using other people as a mirror to break down your own toxicity and dismantle your own shadow attributes. So a lot of you are doing shadow work really strongly in February and you're gonna be a changed person because of it. And I feel like this tower moment, which looks scary, is actually why all of this positive stuff is coming in. Like, it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, also, the tower just suggests that anything that's not built on a strong foundation of mutual love and respect and good communication, honesty, it's gonna break down in February. Like, it's going to end in February, hands down. I mean, we have the Three of Swords, we have the tower, and we have the Eight of Cups, and on the other, these are all in the corners of this spread, and then the Wheel of Fortune. These are the four corners, the foundation of your spread. Three of them talk about walking away. One of them talks about sudden change, sudden positive change. So you're walking away from things that are no longer serving you, walking away from things that are toxic or just not vibing with your soul, just not in alignment with you. You don't chase, you attract, okay? You're not gonna sit here and try to convince people of your worth. And if anyone can't see your worth, it's because they themselves can't see their own worth. So, I don't know. That's your reading, Aquarius. Have a wonderful month. This is gonna be a very positive month. I, there's a lot of fortune and romance and fun and mutual appreciation, a lot of eyes on you, success coming in, popularity's growing, which is great. But there are certainly going to be some triggering moments this month. And I feel like they're not even difficult because <laughs> it doesn't feel like a difficult energy because you're, you're experiencing these triggering moments very consciously and you're using them for self-growth. So that's amazing. That's like all you can ask for. So thank you guys for joining me. Like this video, comment how it resonated down below and subscribe to the channel if you've not already. Definitely watch for your sun, moon, rising, and Venus signs to get the fullest overview of this month ahead. And if you want a personal reading with me one-on-one, -on -one, the link to that is always in the description box, spiritpsychic.org. Thank you guys. Bye-bye.